2006 was just one big day for me. <laughs> it was just one day in Boston Court. Just, just one day drinking cans in Spanish Church. I didn't even realise that, that it was a new year until people were celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's just go back to the start. How, how did you get into acting and comedy? Uh, or was it all something that you wanted to do and it, or it, did it just kind of happen? Well, now that I'm a professional actor... Looking back at my career is is uh, is very inspiring. No, I'm just joking. It's uh, I got into acting because the times that we met you and Galway, myself and the boys, Tom and Martin, that was the beginning of the Hardy Books days. And then we were getting gigs. But before that, I was just living in Galway and I was working in a shop up the road. And then we entered a, the RTE Storyland competition, which was uh, the online competition that RTE organized. And then just through there, we, we started getting past every different level until eventually we were lucky enough to win the competition. And then RT said to us, do you want to make a TV show? And we're like, yes, definitely. Hey, boss. What's the crack, Eddie? How are you? All right now, yeah. Do you want to track the sound and get married? What? Huh? To who? The Russian one. All right, right. Listen, Eddie, I'm a bit busy now or I can't really talk. Hey, come here. It's weird enough, man. Her with him, like, she's a crush from the bed, like. Eddie, man, listen, I'm doing my bloody driving test. I can't speak right now, right? You're allowed to speak. Mr. O'Donnell, if you'd like to go back to the test centre, please, now. No. I think we're finished. No bother. Am I finished already? Am I that good? No, Mr. O'Donnell. You're terrible. You've failed. And then that became my career. <laughs> so there was no... I wasn't looking at Paul Newman back in the day going, I want to be Paul Newman. It was more like, I just want something handy. I think anything in your early life prepared you for the life that you've ended up living over the last decade. Oh, 100%, because everything... Everything is a, when you look back on your life, you're like, oh, that's, I was, I was silly in national school. I was always messing. And that carried through, that became my weapon of choice to try to make people laugh. So I get through this bloody life, you know, to defend myself. And then I suppose everything was leading up to the Hardy books filming on camera. Cause I used to be a messer in school. I used to be always, when I, like the family home, I'd be always off talking to the neighbors or trying to make them laugh or. I was just going around having the crack with people. And that was just the thing I did. I like to make people laugh and uh, make them feel good. So I hope I can continue to do that, James P. Mahan. <laughs> and Owen, you, um, you were, would you say you were in the right place at the right time? Um, it's a bloody good question, and it's a very deep one, too. Was I in the right place at the right time? I suppose I was in a way, too, but it's also like... You can always be in the right place at the right time if you're accepting of the right ideas. But I think at the time, I was. I think we're all a bit lost because at that point when the Hardy books did start, none of us, none of us really knew what we wanted to do with our lives. We were spending too much time going to the gym, getting muscular for some sort of external acceptance. And uh, I think that, I think it came at the right time because we were like, you know what, this is a way for us to express ourselves and to show our funny side. So, uh, yeah, I think it was the right place at the right time. You started on YouTube, you went into television, went into movies, and now you've come back to social media. So do, do you not think that you are probably are the most rounded individual in the Irish circuit? I'm, I've been trying to spread that message around to people, but they just won't listen. They're like, no, you're, you're like a dog with the tail between the legs come back. And I'm like, no, I've come full circle, mate. <laughs> I've learned everything. No, um, I, the thing about the, the internet is that there's such freedom to do whatever you want you can you can you can create whatever you want to create in exactly the way you want to create it whether it's when it goes on to tv or if it's a film or whatever you obviously have to work with a lot of different people and then it becomes something different so i, I think the internet is a brilliant place for definitely conceiving ideas and stuff like that and then when you want to bring it on to the next level i suppose that's where the television and the and the, the film industry lie even though i've only been in one film ever but thank you very much. You make for the people that don't uh, know the Hardy books or myself. They're they're probably thinking, I wonder how many movies that lad's been in. When I do stand up, I'm really scared to talk in front of people, and sometimes I'm backstage and I'm thinking to myself, this is putting years on me. What am I doing this for? But then I go up on stage and I do the jokes and whatever. Some of them work well and some of them don't. And then I after I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? 
the point of that wasn't for me to do the jokes and people laughing. The point of that was, was to prove to myself that I can do it and I can go up on stage and face my fears of looking at people who are looking at me. Do you know who designed that? The same fella that made the game Streets of Rage. He designed the old loose. That's a fact. Read that in a book. How was that fucking so? Read that in Streets a book. Streets of Rage and Lewis. Yeah. Do you know the way the, the software developer from the from the the, 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 the late eighties, early nineties. You know 90s? the way Streets of Rage, the boys just running straight. The Lewis runs in a straight line is the same thing. You know, like you kind of second guess yourself all the time. So that's that'd be like probably every Christmas time I have that feeling around January where I'm like because you know January is a quiet month and you're thinking to yourself what am I doing with my life? How do I explain this to my dad, what I'm doing like as a career? Because he's out in the field picking stones and I'm inside editing a fucking video or whatever. So I don't know. It's just, it's built into my mindset that if you're working, it has to be lifting stuff. And if I'm just on a laptop fucking, you know, cutting and, and pasting and putting on filters, it's, uh, it, can, it can make you second guess your career. But you know what? The underlying feeling I have for all this is that just, you know, this is what I want to do. Mix it in with a bit of hard work. Like about three or four uh, months ago, I was out working with the outlet on the farm and I realized that that's a shite job. I, even in the Hardy Books days, there was never big books to be made. I was expecting like when we got onto TV that RT would slip 50 grand at least under the door, you know. I'd be like, there you go, lads. You've done well for yourselves. And every week then I get a payment off somebody from RT. But uh, that never really happened. And it never really happened with the movie. And it hasn't happened since. Do you have any last words of advice as a guru, as a social media um, consultant as a social media consultant just do whatever is in the essence of your heart and your soul and whatever f makes you feel like you're doing something good do that don't do it for any financial uh, reward don't try to do it for external gratification because you'll never sort of create that contentment inside your soul that you need so try to do it for yourself and everything else will become like a sort of uh, a de uh, everything else will come because of what you're doing that you love inside, you know, your, your heart or whatever.